Hello, welcome to Chess Prime. As part of this video, we are going to see how to create a storage bucket in the GCP. So basically, we are going to see what are the different ways to create a storage bucket in GCP console or different ways to create. So that we are going to see the first. So the first one is like we need to understand so we can able to create the storage bucket in a GCP in a different ways. One is using GCP console directly. It's kind of GUI. You can use it. And the second approach, you can use it some of the command window, which is provided by GCP itself. And the third one is you can use some of the automation tools like a TensorFlow. We are able to create storage bucket. So these are the different ways. There are these are different or three ways you can able to create the storage bucket. So the first one we are going to see today using the GCP console. So if you see here, I have already logged in into my GCP account. So the first one we are going to see how to create a storage bucket with the help of GUI or Google console or GCP console. So this is the first step we are going to see and the remaining two approaches we can see in a later videos. So the first one is how to create GCP or storage bucket with the help of Google console. So for this one, you first need to log in into the uh, your Google console and select the project which you are uh, interested to create storage bucket so if you see in the left panel we can see a lot of menus so first you need to go to the uh, Google or cloud storage so this is the main menu you can click it over here cloud storage so then you can see this interface so let me close out so if you see here right so we are under currently buckets and this is the default one which is selecting and we can see there are other options as well like monitoring and settings so you should be under buckets then you can see over here create so you can click create a bucket so buckets tier by there is a create option you can click over here so this is the interface where you are going to key in all the inputs to create the storage bucket so for this one we need to give the name so this is very important one so the name what we are giving it should be a unique name so it's not just within your projects it will compare with other projects as well other users other projects as well so the name must be unique so you can give such a way that the name cannot be repeated so in case if you want to give a different name you can take the a project id so why i have taken the project ID? the project id is unique so that's the reason I can give but in your case you don't need to give the project ID you can give as per your project specification but that should be unique so this is the first thing you need to understand the name must be unique it's not specific to your project but it should be unique to all other projects or other users as well so if in case if I give something like a test example so it won't allow if I, even if I give test one two three it won't allow because this this bucket is already present at google side gcp side so that's the reason it won't allow so just to make it uniqueness so i just giving the the project id and the project id is unique at which is generated by google itself so once this name is key in, then you can click on continue the second part is the region or where you want to store your bucket so this is a very important one so if you see here the location type you can see multiple options are available a reason a specific reason you want to select like us whatever and a dual reason you can select multiple reasons or countries or multi reason so you can here you can able to select multiple reason so this is what we can able to give more tolerance fault tolerance if there is any issues in the one region so we, the bucket will be available in another region which is got created so that's the reason i am going to select the multi reason multiple reasons in the united states but you can select as per your wish i'm just selecting the multi region and which can be created this bucket in multiple reasons in united states okay so once the location is selected as per your wish you can click on continue so we have done a reason selection so multi reason and now we are under the 
storage classes so this is very important to understand but we are trying to give some high level overview here so basically whenever we are trying to create a bucket and inside that we are trying to give the we are trying to store the multiple objects so this object storage part is the cost base so basically we need to pay the money for the uh, the storage part so how much we need to pay over here we can see the price over here so 0 0.026 per gb so multiple reasons right so let's say for instance we select here different reason near line so the cost is reducing again if you go for cold line the cost is still reducing again if you go for archive the cost is further reducing so basically it's up to you how much you want to pay as per your project specification you can select the storage class but which one you need to select so we have multiple options here but what is the difference so here the speed will vary if you want to select the if you want to read the objects from the storage bucket frequently then you can go for standard in the sense you it will be fast when the retrieval speed is a fast if you want to go for a rarely retrieved in the sense monthly verse then you can go for near near in the sense it is little slow compared to the standard in that way when you keep going down the price is decreasing and thus retrieval speed is decreasing the price is decreasing and retrieval speed is decreasing so that's the reason it's up to you which one you are going to select if you want to retrieve frequently then you can go for a standard if you want to retrieve uh, less frequently a month a quarter or a year then you can select whichever you are interested but right now i'm just going to make it as a default as a standard and then continue so this is a very important one so how to control the objects in terms of access who can able to access your your objects so so that's the way you can able to control so you have an option here if you want to give object access to the public right so then you can select here if you don't want to give to the public then you can uncheck so right now i just want to give access to the public so i'm going to give it the default but make sure if you select this one everybody can able to access your objects or files or images whatever you are trying to store and that will cost you whenever you are reading the file or object or whenever you are retrieving from the storage bucket you need to pay for the money right so that's the reason what i'm trying to do here i'm just making as a public access available this is for testing purpose so i'm just making it as a public but it's up to you which one you are going to select it the second one is uniform so uniform in the sense we have a bucket and inside the bucket we are going to store multiple objects so if you want to give the access to the bucket level not an individual object level so then you can select uniform in case if you want to fine grain the access at individual object level then you can go for fine grain in the sense we have a bucket inside the bucket we have number of objects if you want to give different access level to the each object then you can go for fine grain but just to make it easy i'm just selecting uniform okay that's about access control levels then you can click on continue so that <clears throat> the next level is when you are trying to maintain you know objects right so sometime it will happen the deletion or updating the objects or images what you are trying to update so how we are going to maintain this versioning or delete or backup so that kind of things you can able to control with the help of protect object data so you want to maintain a soft delete for any recovery you can use it or you want to delete all the objects after seven days of deletion or you want to maintain any versioning so all those things will be happening with the help of this versioning so versioning in the sense you want to keep an update of the past previous file previous image or whatever so in that case you can go for versioning so you can able to maintain all the changed versions but right now just to make it simple i'm not going to maintain any versioning and just make it as a default and then finally you can see the last option called encryption so what is the purpose of encryption so right right so you are storing the objects sometimes you can able to store sensitive data also if you want to encrypt the data what you are trying to store inside your 
bucket so you can go for the encryption process but here there is a two way you can able to encrypt one is google provided default encryption or you can manage your own encryption as well so i'm just trying to maintain the default encryption process which is provided by google that's it i'm not going to do any encryption mechanism over here and click on so so this is the things you need to consider when or before creating the bucket so once you have done on the selection process then you can finally you can see the create button you can click on it so the bucket will be created so over here you can see the bucket name so this is the bucket dcp object or bucket so once you click on this one you can see the objects which is available inside your bucket so the bucket name is here i click quick labs dcp whatever this is our bucket name inside the bucket i can able to store multiple files files is called as objects so when we are trying to store the objects we have an option here you can create a folder and inside the folder so this is the folder inside the folder i can able to upload n number of objects so if you want to upload an object so there is an option here upload a file or upload a folder or whatever so this is the way you can able to create the folder upload the files and uh, transfer the data from different location in case if we have from from your gcp bucket to out or out to in so there are different services is available you can explore it so this is mainly basically to upload the data into your gcp bucket from various sources like pops up process data inspection student whatever right so these are different ways to inject the data into your gcp buckets right so right now this is our gcp bucket name and inside that i have created a folder called test inside that i want to upload a simple file let me upload it simple file so what i'm trying to do here so here i can see there is a simple text file is available so there is a two ways you can upload the file one is directly you can do drag and drop so you can see here your file is ready to upload you can do the drag and drop let me upload one of the simple pdf what i have it so it's uploading so upload is done you can see so this is the ppd i have uploaded so we can able to access this one in case if you want to access it how to access it? this is the link it is generating so let me go back here so this is your bucket and inside the bucket is the folder we have got created and this is the object we have uploaded and in case if you want to access it so gcp will give a link for you you can click the object and this is the link is authenticated url gcp got generated you can click on this one and then you can come back over here can paste it so it's downloaded over here so it's downloading so you can able to go over here and yes so this is the downloaded file you can able to see the some of the ppt i have uploaded i can able to download it let me upload a simple text file or some pdf which we can able to see in the browser itself so i am going to upload another file called a simple a pdf let me select a pdf so if you see here this is a pdf i am trying to upload it for here so let me select the pdf so i have a sub of the pdf over here so what i want to do here i just want to upload a simple pdf inside the test folder so you can select here upload a file and then you can come back here so here i have a simple text file i am going to select it so it's uploading so this is the text file i have uploaded click on it so this is the authenticated url which is generated and you can copy the link and then you can come back over here you can paste it you can able to see the 
file content in the browser so this is publicly access right so right now we have selected the public access as a checkbox so that's the reason we can able to access we don't need in case if you want to find grade the access level so there is an option over here so this is the way you can able to upload the objects into your storage bucket and now we have created a folder called test inside that we have uploaded a couple of objects right so i think that's all about uh, gcp bucket creation with the help of google console so as part of the next video we are going to see how to create a bucket with the help of command window okay i think that's all about this video if you like the video you can subscribe to the channel for more subsequent updates and thank you thank you so much